Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're back, we're live, we're young talents making way all here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Andrea Gabrielli, I'm your host, and every Tuesday we keep an eye on the future with our most brilliant school students as we talk about their science projects. And joining me today is Kyla Kohara from Iolani High School, who carried out a science project regarding the non-tuberculous mycobacteria, which apparently thrive in Hawaii soil. Well, Welcome to the show, Kyla. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Very nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, why uh, do we need to raise awareness on this particular bacterium? What is this uh, uh, bacterium? Um, well, mycobacteria is, um, there's a lot of back background on it. It's part of a large genus of actinobacteria, which um, consists of over 190 species, um, many of which are pathogenic. Uh, which means that they can cause diseases in humans and mammals and fish. And um, two of the common ones, um, M. leprae causes leprosy, M. tuberculosis causes tuberculosis, and um, everything else in that genus is kind of thrown into this category of NTMs, non-tuberculous microbacteria. And you focused on this particular category yeah, that was my on your, uh, for your science project. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, well, because there we already have a lot of research being done on tuberculosis. Um, uh, everyone is aware of it. We've all had to get TB tests for work or um, getting a new job. Right. Um, so that's really controlled. And I guess the, the yeah. Hansen's disease, the leprosy, uh, mm -hmm. especially here in Hawaii, we are aware of its effects yeah. because of the uh, Kalaupapa, all the, 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 the people who were affected with this disease were sent and Father Damien was able to uh, help them and, and so we are familiar yeah. with this, and Molokai, yeah. Um, and so you focused on, on this particular subject. I'm very curious to learn more about uh, uh, this infection. And I believe that uh, your first slide is about, uh, is, is a schematics of what is this, uh, what this infection is about. So maybe let's have our first slide up. But yeah, okay. So what are some of the symptoms? Yeah, so um, non-tuberculous mycobacteria can cause pulmonary infections and they're very similar, they're comparable to that of tuberculosis. Oh, okay, it's similar to tuberculosis, yeah. but okay. Um, but it's a different species, and so it can cause difficulty breathing, chronic coughing, fatigue, weakness, um, and then it can also just worsen your pre-existing lung conditions, and it just gets progressively more debilitating. So is this a disease that people who already have lung problems might be more prone to be infected with? Yeah, so the people who are more susceptible to it are people who have had um, lung conditions such as bronchitis, or um, also people who are over the age of 65. Oh, okay. People, um, there are some trends in different ethnicities, Japanese people and Asian Pacific Islanders are one of the people who are at higher risks. Higher risks, mm -hmm. okay. How, how do you get infected? I believe we have a, a new slide yeah. to describe this. Um, yeah. So, um, NTM, they're ubiquitous in the environment, so you would likely find them in soil. And so it's a, it's a bacterium that lives in soil. Okay. Yeah. We have it in, in Hawaii. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And um, so um, we are looking at um, a picture here. We have a soil with a growing um, plant, a sprouting plant, but we also have a shower. Yeah, so. Why is that? Mycobacteria is hydrophobic, so while it needs water, it likes to attach to particles and plumbing systems. Oh, okay. So that's where you would find it, and then you can become infected if you breathe in airborne soil particles or have um, drinking water that has NTM in it. So, for example, um, I would get this, uh, in this, I would come in contact with this bacterium if uh, I were, for example, to uh, breathe soil, I suppose, yeah. or do you also, and how do you uh, breathe soil, I guess, so we can um, get the people know, yeah. Well, um, it's likely caused by soil being kicked up um, in the wind, or um, there's just particles floating around, and it's likely you just inhale it without knowing. Uh, what about if you ingest, uh, for example, uh, vegetables that are not well cleaned? So, for example, they have uh, 
particles of soil on it. We have uh, last week we had a show about <laughs> this. So um, that's why the question, yeah. That's a good question, actually. I don't think there's much research um, that's been done on how we are actually getting infected. It's just um, speculated that that's where infection is being occurred because human to human transmission doesn't happen and um, we only know where it's found in the environment. Right. And talking about this, let's see where uh, we can find it in the environment. So the geographical distribution of this disease. Yeah, so this graph is showing um, the isolation rates of Mycobacterium avium, which is a really common um, species that's very pathogenic, it's very harmful. And you you see, see, so we're looking at this map in the United States, uh, the highest, uh, I'm looking at the highest rate, uh, it seems Florida and, and Arizona, but also Hawaii. Hawaii is uh, dark in this map. Yeah, so what I found, um, the Laboratory of Clinical Infectious Diseases actually reported that we have um, the highest pre prevalence in the entire United States. We have about 396 cases per 100,000, and um, that's about 3,000. 3,000 cases annually of people infected by this. It seems it, it seems to be quite common. Yeah, and somehow it's not really Somehow well it's known. not very well known, yeah. Okay, so I'm very interested. Let's learn more about uh, the presence of this disease, this mycobacterium uh, in Hawaii. So let's have our first next slide up. Okay, so these are the cases uh, uh, in the Hawaiian Islands. Yes, yeah, so there's been one study done um, it was the Honda uh, 2016. Yeah, yeah Dr. Jennifer Honda, she's actually um, been kind of my mentor in this. Oh, okay. She did this um, study collecting samples, but most of her samples are actually household water samples, so shower heads. Yeah. And so there's kind of a lack of knowledge still in the soil aspect, which is what led me to my interest. Um, focusing on that. And so, what are the um, so what's your science project about? Uh, being aware of this lack of information, lack of knowledge, lack of mm -hmm. science about uh, this infection. So, I did a lot of research trying to figure out what causes NTM and then um, where it's found. But the place that um, research was most lacking in is what kind of interested me. Um, what are the isolation rates of NTM in Hawaii? Rather what does than, uh, isolation rate mean? Um, that means, so NTM, as we know, is found in the environment, but not all soil particles or not all soil samples would have NTM. So I wanted to see if there's more concentrated rates of NTM in certain areas around Oahu. Oh, OK, so basically you're trying to uh, isolate, so separate uh, yeah. this particular bacterium from the other species uh, present that live in the, sa in the, in the mm -hmm. soil. And uh, um, so let's see some um, schematics of your experiment. Let's see more about what you actually did as part of the science project. Uh, so let's have our next slide up. Um, OK. So I decided to research the isolation rates and see if there's any conditions in the environment that um, cause the higher rates in Hawaii. When maybe it can answer why Hawaii is a very high risk area for attaining this lung condition. So I tried to isolate it from different locations in Oahu. And then I predicted that the places with higher acidity, higher temperatures, and higher rainfalls would have um, more NTMs. So the more uh, tropical locations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe we have a map of this, uh, the, the study uh, areas. Okay, this, this is it. Yeah, these are the samples that you. Yeah, so those dots are um, the 11 soil samples I collected around central Oahu. They're places I figured would be really high trafficked. Um, oh. So, you know, like uh, the YPO soccer complex, um, uh, Manoa Falls hiking areas, places that we really. Get, get exposed to soil. Yeah. Ah, okay. I see. And so um, we, we have this slide where this is the first goal of your project. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a, a second goal here So on this slide. My yeah. second goal is to take the isolation rates, um, count, count how much colonies of NTM I can grow per same amount of soil, and then take that and compare it to the temperatures and see if there's any uh, correlation between pH, salinity, um, those factors. So how do you uh, isolate a bacterium? How do you grow it? 
Um, well, I kind of jumped into it. I took protocols given to me from my mentor, Dr. Honda. Right. And um, so what you just do is take the soil and turn it into a kind of a slurry um, uh, with water, and you plate that onto agar plates so that you can incubate it and grow it up. And you just expose it to detergents or chemicals that might kill non mycobacteria. This is very interesting. Yeah. And l let's see a, 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 a one more slide that where we can see your growing samples, I guess. Okay, so this is your um, lab or? Yeah, so this is actually at my school, Iolani. Yeah, um, the Iolani school, yeah. It's kind of broken down into four steps to get the plates in the incubator. I turn it into that um, soil and water mixture and I work inside the safety cabinet um, to contain the bacteria. You did this for all of the locations where you collected yeah, for soil any from. Yeah. Okay. And so, and, and you, um, so you were able to follow the procedures which your mentor uh, told you. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. This is, a, I, I suppose, this is a wonderful experience. Yeah, to get yeah. to work with. Uh, I learned a lot of different scientific procedures, different um, safety precautions, and um, using different tools. It's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm curious now. Let's see some pictures of these bacteria. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have samples of my colonies. This is uh, this is still your methods, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. These are the. Mm, okay. So the soil contains tons of bacteria that aren't that aren't NTMs. It has bacteria and fungi just living in All the soil. All sorts of creatures living yeah. in the soil. Yeah. So I plated that on, as a control. So that would show me everything that's living in the soil. And then I repeated the same process, but this time I added a detergent, which is CPC, um, which is the protocol that's used to isolate NTMs from shower heads. And, um, so you basically, uh, how do you get rid of the other bacteria in this? Uh... So if you take that soil mix and then add CPC, it's a strong detergent which kills a lot of weaker bacteria. Oh, it kills them, okay. Yeah, so they won't grow up on the plates and they won't show up. Um, and mycobacteria is a really hardy cell, so it's pretty resistant to um, strong detergents and strong acids. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So that can be um, something to, you know, concern because it's, it, it seems to be quite resistant to all these uh, uh, chemicals and everything, yeah? Yeah, so I thought it would be pretty simple um, just getting, killing non-NTM bacteria, and um, I would see hopefully um, NTM grow up on the plates after about three weeks, which is how long we expect it to take. But um, on my plates, you can see that actually after three days, there's already an overgrowth of bacteria, which couldn't possibly be NTMs because of how fast it appeared. So the, the, what you say, what you call as the, the colonies of bacteria are these uh, sort of brown and greenish dots that we can see in, in, uh, in, uh, in each of the glass samples of this picture? Yeah, so you see a lot of the same things that are in the control plates on the decontaminated plates, which is not what we're looking for. We're looking for um, only a sparse amount of growth after about 14 days around. Do you have to work uh, under certain conditions to grow these bacteria? Because I suppose uh, contamination from it would be uh, kind of... Yeah, it was pretty strict. So I had to make sure I did everything inside a certain room and keep it in um, one small space where there's an air right. air filter that prevents anything from leaving. Air filters, okay, that's mm -hmm. what you need. And you're watching uh, Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. It, we're talking about these uh, uh, potential dangerous bacteria and we're going to be back for more. We're going to learn more where it, this bacteria can actually be found here in Hawaii. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha.
and we're back, we're live. We are young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. Today we have um, Kyla Kohara from Iolani High School and we're talking about the potential dangers and th of this um, non-tuberculous mycobacteria here in Hawaii. Um, so thank you for being here. Yes. Um, um, so today actually we have a special um, tool. We, ha we can join our conversation here live and you can call this number 808-374-214 to join our conversation if you want to ask questions about this bacteria, this disease, this infection uh, with, with Kyla today. Okay, so uh, before the, uh, Kyla, before the break, mm -hmm. we were talking about, you were showing pictures of your growing colonies of these uh, bacteria. Um, so. Let's see some more pictures. Let's continue to discuss about this and learn more where these bacteria can actually be found. Um, so um, my first method of decontaminating um, non non tuberculous mycobacteria from the soil yeah. was kind of ineffective in a way because a lot of non-NTMs were able to survive my decontamination process. And we were talking about the, the contamination problem, you know, yeah. issue earlier. Yeah, that's right. Um, so what did you do to improve on this uh, method? So I tried another method. I kind of repeated the same procedure, but instead of using the agar plates that I had used before, I used some that had malachite green, which is an antibacterial dye. So hopefully that would provide um, a little more pressure on NTMs to grow as opposed to non-NTMs. Is that what happened? Is that what we're so looking here? That's what you see on the left. Those four plates are actually after about 15 days of growth and absolutely nothing grew. Yeah, I see only the empty plates. Yeah, yeah nothing grew, which is a little bit surprising because... Um, so we have Manoa, Waipaho, Macaulay and Ayea here, these four mm -hmm. samples. Yeah. And Why did you focus on these uh, specific four locations? Because we showed earlier that you had more. Um, I just repeated the process on a smaller sample just oh, okay. to try to perfect my methods before I went and um, repeated everything in triplicate so I could right. okay. have more data. Okay. And so, uh, but in the pictures on the right, again, Manoa, Waipahu, Makali, and Ayea samples, I can see that uh, there are some brown spots, so I guess these are the colonies of so day 15, is that? Yeah, so I tried a third method using sodium hydroxide and oxalic acid. Oh, okay. Um, and these actually provided really promising results at day 15. There were colonies that looked like NTMs, so based on the morphology, you expect them to be um, these yellow, bright, round colonies. So you had three methods to basically uh, grow these bacteria. The first one, it was not strong enough in killing uh, the contaminant bacteria. Mm -hmm. The second one, I guess it killed everything. Because, yeah. uh, <laughs> and extreme. so the third one, uh, how do you know that um, the third one here, we are actually growing these NTMs, so this non-tuberculous mycobacteria? Well, we base it off of several factors, um, one of which is the rate of growth. So as we expected, oh. it would grow about um, after two weeks to three weeks, and that's when it started appearing. So that was a good sign. And then we looked at the colors, um, the size, and um, just the fact that uh, we did use these detergents that are specific for NTMs, it's a pretty good reason to believe. But um, okay. we wanted to prove um, even further, identify the species, That's so right. then I jumped into a couple more. Um, the, let's see our boxes. next slide, so we can see. Oh, so you, 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 this is DNA? Yeah, so it started to get a little bit more technical to identify um, with positive results. I had to make sure that it was NTM. Yeah, okay. So, so I, it's not just the, the, the growth rate, but you really wanted to make sure yeah. that's exactly what we had, the, the, the NTA by having DNA analysis. Okay, so um, how, do, how do you perform uh, DNA analysis in a school lab? I guess this is... Kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, so once I have that bacteria on the plates, yeah. I sh uh, took a cotton, cotton swab and just basically um, tried to lice those cell walls so I could um, release the DNA from the bacteria cells. And then 
PCR is polymerase chain reaction, which allows me to amplify the DNA and make a bunch of copies that it's, I have enough DNA to send to a lab and sequence. Wow, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So what did you find out? So I sent about 11 samples um, from my previous, um, the third method that worked best. I sent 11 samples to the lab and um, which it was actually was it? Which lab? a large and sequencing lab. So, oh, okay. they, so they do it for you. They take the DNA once you prepare it and make a clean data set. Is that on Oahu or? Um, no, I shipped it out. Oh, where it? Where is it? Um, I'm not sure where it's based, but. Oh, okay, but it's uh, away from it's Oahu. It's away from here. Oh, yeah. so, wow. So how do you ship? Because it can get, you know, it can. Um, you just take it into a little, um, plastic DNA vial and then. Oh, do you it. have d DNA vials that are mm -hmm. made on purpose to actually? Yeah. Ship. Wow. Okay. Didn't know you could ship DNA. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and so uh, the lab basically sent you the results back. Yeah. So after waiting about a week, they were able to send me the DNA sequences, and then I would take those and um, put them into a database. Uh, it's called GenBank database, which has uh, archived everyone, every researcher's um, DNA sequences. So. They put a name to it and they put the sequences that they found out there so that we can compare it to what we find in our own research studies. Okay. And so, um, what did you find with respect to the individual samples? Uh, um, do you have more bacteria in Manoa or, you know? So, as it turned bubble? out, that from my 11 samples, um, none of them were NTMs, which is really shocking. Oh! Uh, yeah, it was. We I was, initially when I f formed my hypothesis, I kind of had assumed that I would find um, a lot of NTMs, simply because of the high prevalence here. I thought there would be a lot, um, but as it turns out, that there's a lot of complications with the soil um, compared to the household um, shower heads. It's a lot easier to extract NTM from those that aren't exposed to as many bacteria. Right. So a lot of non-NTM bacteria got into my samples and so I actually found some bird flus. Um, I found um, different um, in skin, skin type of infections um, which weren't NTMs but um, that kind of led me to choosing uh, new research questions, kind of adjusting my focus. So basically, science is a learning process. Yeah, you start with an hypothesis, you make an experiment, mm -hmm. but then the experiment turns up all your hypothesis, you know, yeah. around. And so what, what, are you try, what, what are you going to focus now on? So I kind of adjusted my question. I kind of realized that that before I can even get those isolation rates, I have to perfect the methods. The method yeah. of isolation, actually. Yeah. So how you? So yeah. a lot of my research became, um, you know, that trial and error process of finding the right decontamination detergents. And um, since we know that there's actually over 190 species of mycobacteria, there's actually different types of resistances. Um, some are more resistant to CPC, which is what I use. Um, some will survive that and some will um, actually be killed by those detergents. Right. And so we have to like, keep adjusting our methods uh, specific to Hawaii. Because you don't really know, uh, there is no research published regarding uh, what kind of detergents are good for just keeping the NTM and killing all the rest. Yeah. Okay, so that's very interesting. Uh, now, you uh, presented uh, all this work uh, at the Hawaii State Science and Engineering Fair. Mm -hmm. How was uh, this experience? It was, it was a great experience. Um, I got to talk to a lot of judges who gave me a lot of insight on my research. That's right, that's what I would think because yeah. to, to um, make more research questions and um, basically try a better way of making this experiment, you must have got a lot of feedback from. Yeah, so I kind of explained the same um, struggles that I've had, the yeah. different roadblocks, and they gave me some suggestions such as um, trying to replicate the exact same procedures that were done in the previous study, um, as well as um, swabbing my control plates and seeing if there's any NTM in that. Um, trying different methods that um, would help me um, pose new future questions for future research. Wow, okay. So are you planning on uh, carrying out more? You are a 12th grader at mm -hmm. Iolani High School. And so uh, next year, I guess, you will be going to 
Um, college? Or? Yeah, next year I'm going to be going to college in the University of British Columbia, but in, in the Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, in Vancouver. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you going to focus more on this particular subject or? Before I leave, yeah, I hope to um, this summer collect more data um, and try the different procedures that I've been recommended and see if there's any better results in this. Are you going to be um, working with the same mentor or also uh, um, other? I'm going to be doing my research still at Iolani and um, she's been helping me along the way, telling me different things I can do. So yeah, she'll definitely be helping me. Okay, but I was thinking maybe you could uh, find also some potential collaborations with the University of Hawaii and Manoa. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, throughout my process, I was also helped by Dr. Um, Harry and B.B. Davis. They um, have helped me uh, adjust my presentation, um, helped me uh, figure out methods of collecting my data, such as the pH and um, the different weather climate data that I needed. So they've also given me some advice. And we thank uh, Harry and Bibi. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Bibi. And, and um, so now with all this background, so you mentioned uh, you, had, uh, you have a variety of experience now on this particular subject. What will you study in college then? Um, so I'm going into the Faculty of Science at um, UBC. Yeah. And I'm not entirely sure what my major is going to be, but I'm hoping to either do biochemistry, biochemistry or microbiology. So you can learn more about this. Yeah. Um, you know, time really flies, and we have about one minute left in our conversation. What do you? What would you tell our audience today? Uh, to raise awareness on this particular disease? What should people be aware of? Um, I definitely think people should be aware of where um, NTM is, where you might be at risk of NTM, um, and also uh, the different uh, symptoms that it causes, which are really similar to tuberculosis. So I want to gain awareness um, of that as well. This, put, this really uh, hazardous mm -hmm. symptoms that can cause lung problems and everything. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kyla. Thank, Thank you, you for being here with us today. And so you've been watching uh, Young Talents Making Way only here on FinTech Hawaii. And next Tuesday, we will be back for more, more Young Talents here. Stay tuned.